uh, three, two, one, and we are live. So, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm I'm really really excited this morning. I've got uh, Donna, as you can see, Donna Poole with me, and we're going to be chatting to Donna a little bit about what she's doing and uh, some insights that she has around uh, the future of digital communications. Right? She's a she's a um, a digital uh, communications consultant. Has quite a bit of experience in this field. But um, let's not steal Donna's thunder. Um, Donna, straight over to you. So uh, where are you currently? And uh, tell us a little bit about what you're busy with uh, work-wise. Yeah. Hi, Peter, and good morning, everyone. Um, so I'm in London. Um, we've had quite a few hot days, um, so struggling a bit with the heat, but it's a, it's a lovely day. Um, so where, where I work currently, um, is that what you were asking me? Yes, yes. Yeah, so I am I am a consultant. I'm a communication consultant. Um, I am currently at um, GSK. Um, I'm an engineer by background, so um, I yeah, that's where I've studied in the oil and gas industry. But I'm very passionate about communication and, and digital communication, especially. Um, and the reason that is is because I've been part at many large corporates in global business transformation programs. And when things go wrong, communication is the one thing that people mention um, they, as, as a reason for the failure of that program. And it's also the backbone of very successful programs. So that's why I'm very interested in communication. And from very early in my career, I've kind of taken that path towards um, communication and especially digital communication. Very early on, I was involved with um, intranet developments. Um, and yeah, I, I love the fact that um, I don't know whether you're aware of the Edelman Trust Barometer, uh, but the Edelman Trust Barometer talks about how the shift in trust um, has moved from CEOs and politicians and brands to people like you and me. And I love that. I love that power to the people. Right, um, absolutely. That this has created. Absolutely. And, and I'm glad you mentioned the, the Edelman um, uh, trust barometer because you're quite right. I mean, what's happened with digital communication is it, 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 it has actually democratized communication, right? And it's given everybody a voice. And wow, that's, that's really, it is really a powerful thing that's happened on, on the planet. That's for sure. So um, um, GSK, for those of you that don't know, is GlaxoSmithKline. Um, that's, that's where... Uh, uh, Donna is at the moment. So, Donna, what what caught my attention um, when when we were uh, w w how I ran across you actually was an article that you did, a piece that you wrote on LinkedIn around how Unilever has successfully uh, implemented agile and and virtual uh, uh, virtual working arrangements. So, maybe you just want to just for the sake of everybody who's watching, just keep a little bit of background about your experience there. Um, at Unilever, and and ex especially with the ability for them now to to work virtually and and you know uh, yeah, approach it from an from an agile agile working perspective. Yes, so um, I think the main reason I wrote that article is because I realized how advanced a company like Unilever is in that space, and so um, when I compare them to other large corporates, you know, peers. In, in the industry and, and, and around in the, in the FTSE 100 companies. Um, they really stand out as, as the best in my view. Um, and it's, it's just everything comes together um, in, in a very, in, in an amazing way, the technology. So when I started, for example, I was able from very beginning to get my email and calendar on my personal phone. Um, I was given a laptop with Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi in the building, um, it is great. You can just pick up your laptop from the docking station. You can go to whatever floor, whatever meeting room, and you, you, it just doesn't, doesn't interrupt. Um, and that might sound trivial, but actually it's not, and it requires quite a lot of um, you know, technology behind it. Um, so it's just, it's just the fact that I was very... Um, equipped from the beginning to hit the ground running, been able to work straight away, and the technology enabled us. Uh, that was kind of one element. The second element was um, that I was trusted from, from the moment I started. I didn't have to prove myself. I didn't have to 
um, show that I'm dedicated. Um, people just assume that, that, you know, they hired me to do a good job, ideally a great job. Um, and so wherever I worked, whether it was, um, I don't know, in, in a coffee shop or at home or in the park, I remember my director used to say, I don't really care where you work as long as your job gets done. Um, and so that I, I really appreciated that trust they put in me and I wanted to repay them for, for the trust that they put in me. And so I worked really hard and, um, you know, I did a good job. But it was also the fact that the environment, everybody was really motivated because of that, because we felt like uh, the company had put this trust in us and the leadership. And so it was a very motivating, very productive environment. And I think the digital side of things had a major factor in that. Right. And, and you know what, that's that comment that you made about your director um, and and the fact that, you know, the team could actually work from anywhere as long as the job got done. You know, technology actually enables that kind of management style now because, you know, it, it doesn't really matter, as you said, if you're sitting in a park or a coffee shop or wherever, as long as the job gets done, that's the important thing. But but the spirit that that created in the team as a result of the, obviously they were being trusted and obviously there's work-life balance involved with that. I really enjoyed reading that piece. And um, <clears throat> for those of you that, that haven't read Donna's piece, if you pop onto my uh, Facebook profile, you'll see that I did share that piece there. The one thing I did want to ask you before we move on, uh, Donna, yeah. that uh, there was in that piece, there was a picture, um, I think of, was it was it Unilever CEO that was interacting with, with staff on Twitter? Was that, was, that, was that what that was about? Yeah, it was on Twitter. It was um, uh, Salesforce Chatter, which is oh, our, yeah, was the internal social media platform. Um, right. And um, he wanted to engage with the employees. And I was very fortunate to be part of a project, which was the first time that we've had um, um, a CEO chat. It was called Ask Paul. And apparently he's enjoyed it quite quite a lot because he's doing it quite often now, I understand. Um, so, yeah, it was um, basically anybody, one of any any one of the 107,000 employees were, were was able to ask, ask questions in advance of the broadcast. Um, or within that one hour, basically log on to the social media platform and just ask any question. And he was there with a few people around him um, answering online. Right. And, and that's, you know, so which brings me actually to the next question I, I wanted to ask you. And, and it actually does relate to leadership um, and leadership teams. So, you know, in 2017, uh, what's happening is uh, digital workplaces are, are being developed, that, you know, especially for companies that, that are wanting to stay relevant. That's exactly what, they, what they're busy implementing right now and making sure that, that's, that they have robust digital workplaces and the technology that supports that and everything. Now, m my question to you is like, from a leadership perspective, what, what should leadership pay attention to in this new digital workplace environment that, that we have really are heading into at breakneck speed? So I think, first of all, leadership needs to start using digital themselves. Um, it is great to be encouraging, um, but I do think that um, you know, CEOs and, and CFOs and CIOs need to use the, the tools themselves and need to role model um, yeah. because it's only when you use um, social media, for example, or, or this, um, you know, Office 365 or SharePoint Online, or uh, I'm not saying they need to use them every day because maybe that's not possible, but at least once in a while, they understand what is required and they understand the um, digital literacy, for example, um, education that we need to do with our employees. Um, and then they'll, they'll be able to support it. If they don't use it themselves, it's like a remote concept that they want to support, but they don't quite understand how. So I think that's that's number one for me, kind of using it and, and role modeling it. Um, so so, so I, I just want to ask you something about that. And I can't remember if it was... I know I was speaking to someone else about this um, the day before yesterday, and I can't remember when we chatted to arrange this, if I did speak to you about this. But, you know, there's a concept called working out loud. Yes. And, <clears throat> you know, what that actually just, just for everybody who's watching, what that speaks to is that if you are in a digital workplace environment, you know, one of the things that in order for you to be visible in that environment is you have to work out loud, right? Which means that you have to share 
you know, what you're busy with. And it's, it's actually a digital literacy, I believe, you know, that's, that allows you to, to actually do that. And I think the point you're making is that, that leadership should, should actually be able to do that, right? That's right, yes. Um, I am helping launch um, Yammer, which is another, pl another social media platform at work. And um, we've nominated some Yambassadors, so like social media champions, people who, um, you know, just to help us get it off the ground for, for, the time, for the time being. And I think working out loud is one of the things they find the, the hardest. Right. Um, I think it's not in, in our innate way to boast, especially in you know English culture. Um, and sometimes when you work out loud, you do become visible. And I think they feel a bit uncomfortable about that. Um, I, I know somebody um, that I work with was saying, well, I have to really think about you know what I'm posting and how much value it adds to my company. Um, and I've kind of tried to make a bit light of it. So say it's it's not necessarily, you know, doesn't have to be like a, a PhD paper or anything. It could just be something very, very small. It just, you know, I've met somebody or I've attended this workshop and these were the, the key takeouts or I've attended a broadcast or this is what I'm working on. I need some advice or has anybody done something similar? It, that's all it takes. It doesn't have to be something that you spend quite a lot of time because you should be, uh, normal behavior you should be able to just do it every day of course i see i see marina um has joined us as well as lisa they both say good morning hi guys morning. Um, <laughs> chatting to donna uh pool here who is a communications a digital communications consultant expert in the field working at gsk at the moment so uh, that's that's really great so you know I, I want you to just carry on with with this discussion we're having about you know the workout loud thing um Generation Z, <clears throat> which which is I, I actually prefer to call them the the Snapchat generation. You know the, the the idea of of sharing your life in the form of a story, which which is what Snapchat really is all about. You know you say you share the story. My daughter and I communicate extensively using Snapchat, and and we create stories of our lives every day. So it's, for me, it's almost become a a second nature to to just you know share my life. And and it's it's my view that that's that kind of literacy, that kind of a skill that's needed in order for for a, a digital workplace environment to really work well, because then people are are visible and and people can see you know what's going on despite despite where they are. It doesn't matter where they are really. So um, Donna, I want you to just um, touch on something else that I that I think is important because I think you you have some experience with this as well. And that is, you know, what what is your view on on um, virtual teams going forward? What do you think is going to happen in businesses going forward as far as virtual teams are concerned? So, I, um, at Unilever, I was part of a virtual team. We had people, you know, living in Switzerland and England, all over all over the world. And um, the reason it worked so well was because we had we had Skype for business, for example. So you could conference with, you know, fifty people around the world. You could do video. You could share your desktop. You could collaborate on a document. Then you could upload it to um, OneDrive, and then uh, you know everybody would have access to it. So I think it's. For me, um, in terms of working in virtual teams, is curiosity, wanting to learn more, wanting to understand the technology and how the technology can help you deliver what is it that you, you know, in terms of performance. Right. Um, but I think it's having this digital mindset of being curious, wanting to try things out, um, wanting to be an early adopter of new technology, um, understanding um, you know, collaboration in, in the sense of um, how technology can enable that. Um, yeah. And yes, there is a value for face-to-face, -face, don't get me wrong. We, we used to meet uh, every three months and have a face-to-face, -face, um, you know, session in London. But that's not viable for everyone. It's not cost-effective. So the more you can use the technology to help you um, collaborate, um, I think the, the more successful you can be. So I must tell you something interesting. In our business, <clears throat> one of the things that that uh, we have done, um, firstly, when when we, we you know when the business started, the, the first thing we said is that that we want this business to be location independent, meaning that it could actually operate from anywhere. But then, 
uh, because of the nature of our business, you know, Future Work IQ, I mean, we obviously have to be on the bleeding edge of technology. We also decided that, that you know, any trainings that we do, most of the discussions that we do, um, you know, we wanted it to happen virtually. And of course, as you say, the, the face-to-face stuff is very important and there's definitely a place for that. But, you know, what our experience has been is that this virtual environment enables so much more because, you know, people don't have to travel. There's not the issues related to traffic and distance and all that kind of stuff, which is really interesting. I, I do want to come back to this, but Marina makes a comment here. She says she's driving to Durban and she keeps losing connection, uh, but she's enjoying the, the conversation and we'll watch watch later. Now, you see, this is this is exactly an example of how fascinating this technology is. I mean, yeah. here you are, Donna, sitting in in, uh, in London, I'm sitting in Pretoria, and Marina is driving in a car on her way to Durban. I mean, it's just, it's nuts, right, what, yeah. what can happen. Yeah. So um, uh, just, I just want to talk to you about this idea around, oh, uh, around you know, your experience in a virtual team that you had um, at Unilever. You said that, that it, you made the, the point of trying to get into a face-to-face session every three months or so. What, what impact did that have on, on, your, on your virtual experience? So, so you had the virtual and then the face-to-face. <clears throat> did you find that that actually improved the communications that you had virtually with each other? Yeah, I think, I think it did. And, and the reason for that is that, um, you know, we also had a social event at the end uh, of, our, of our team meeting. And when you get to know people a bit more on a perhaps, um, you know, personal level, um, a bit more informal, um, I think it does help the, the virtual relationship building going forward. Um, so, yeah, I think that was, that was really good. They kind of complemented each other. I do want to talk about skills because I, I know this is a topic that's also close to your heart. But before we do, I want to mention to you that, you know, some of the companies that that are that are totally remote, like you know, especially some technology businesses. Um, if I, I'm thinking of a, of a company like Basecamp um, or or the guys that run WordPress, which is um, automatic, and then there's a company called Buffer. You know, they they very much do exactly what you've described. I, I know the Buffer team, for example, recently was in Cape Town. Uh, for their get together that they had, um, which they do also every quarter, they they just get together and make sure that the team can just touch base with each other. I think that's that's a very important element as we move to this into this environment of digital workplaces and virtual teams and all that. I think that mix of of face to face and then virtual and then back face to face is a very powerful recipe. But but let's talk about let's talk about um, skills, um, Donna. So. In your experience from everything that you've done um, working in virtual teams and digital workplaces and so on, um, what what is your views on, on the skills that are required to operate in environments like that? Well, I think in terms of the skills, um, I mean, yes, of course, you need to um, know how to use um, social media, how to use Skype for business. Um, I think for me, it's it's... It's not necessarily the the actual skill of doing it. It's more about the mindset. It's right. it's, the, it's the the willingness to learn, um, the willingness to try out things. Because yeah, I mean, I can read the um, you know I can watch a short video. People learn in different ways, right? So some people would like to watch a short video. Other people might have to do an e-learning course. Other people might you know prefer like a forty slides PowerPoint document to understand how to do things. Everybody learns in in different ways. But that drive to want to learn, to want to understand, to want to uh, be able to collaborate with others, I think that is, for me, the, the, the most important skill. I don't know whether you can call it a skill. For me, it's more of a mindset. Right. So, so you know, at, at, at what, as I mentioned to you, at Future Work IQ, we've got a, a course that we run. It's called Digital Literacy 101. And basically what it is, it, it, it actually helps people to become – to, to develop a, a dexterity in these environments. In other words, the ability to um, collaborate and communicate digitally. You know, it, it's an art, actually, because sometimes the written word, for example, you know, can be, can be misinterpreted because you can't, you can't see the tone of, of, of the person or, or you don't, you know, it's difficult to convey that unless you develop that skill. What I love about where we've headed to now, um, you know, especially because of what Facebook has done and, and all the, the, 
the infrastructure of the internet getting better is that video has become a, a really large piece of, of this puzzle that we're talking about. And of course, with video, we can see each other's expressions and, you know, it, it really does make a difference. Exactly. But I know, I want to, I, I just want to carry on with this topic because I know that you are, you busy recruiting are you busy recruiting some people at the moment? Is that? Is we that are. You... Yes, I am. Yes, <laughs> I would like to the more digital communication specialist to join my team. Yes. All right. Okay. So maybe I should talk to you afterwards about about this. But <laughs> just joking. So, so um, Donna, I want to I want to ask you. I know you wrote a piece uh, recently again on LinkedIn actually about about this whole process and what what you are actually looking for. And I found this fascinating because, you know, in the old days, <clears throat> it, was the C, it was the CV that arrived and you looked at this and, and that was it, you know. But things have, things have changed pretty dramatically as a result of digital workplaces and what's required now, right? So talk to us about that. Yes, they have. Um, so, yeah, I think the reason I, I wrote that piece was, um, you know, uh, uh, recently, I've been interviewing quite a lot of people. I'm, I'm reviewing CVs, and um, it was really an eye opener for myself as well. I kind of saw the reasons I failed in the past, um, and I have been unsuccessful at interviews. So I just wanted to write to write this to um, to basically tell people my experience as a, from from the side of the hiring manager, and yes. and how. Um, you know how I see things, and and how people when they when they come to interview, you know how how they see me in my eyes, and 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 the rationale for that. So yeah, that's um, that's the reason um, I wrote it. And um, I guess the main thing I wanted to say was about listening. Um, I think, and and I do this all the time. Um, you know, when I'm very passionate about communication, if it's if if I'm faced with like a really important job interview, I tend to talk so much. Uh, because I want to show how brilliant I am and I want to show that I know everything and I can do everything and I want to wow them. Um, but I have learned now, having been on the other side of the table, that it's important to listen. It, it needs to be a balance uh, between listening and, and and talking. And the other element I wanted to convey with my article was that CV is kind of old-fashioned. Um, because I am looking for people that have this digital mindset I tend to look um, digital persona and, and how they convey themselves on social media. So is their LinkedIn profile um, really polished, really built? Do they have endorsements from people? Because it, it's sometimes the skills that we think we're good at are not the skills that other people think we're good at. And for a hiring manager, it's important to see what not only what you think you're good at, but how people perceive you. Recommendations are crucial for me. Uh, because they give me a picture of the person, not just their skills, but the way they engage, their working style, um, their attributes, the, the values. So all of this comes through. And so for me, um, looking at, you know, basically Googling, I, I just Google their name. I look on Twitter. I look on LinkedIn, sometimes on Facebook, just to see, to build this holistic picture of the persona and see whether they fit, not just from a skill set perspective, but also from a company culture fit. Because corporates are, you know, big, large companies. Um, there are certain ways in which people act. And, um, you know, we have very strong, um, a very strong culture. So not everybody feels comfortable. Right. So <clears throat> let, me, let me share something interesting with you. Um, there's a, an engineer that I got to know <clears throat> who was working for Google. His name is Paul Adams and subsequently has actually moved over to Facebook and, and I think has moved on from Facebook uh, as well. But he was very involved with, with the um, engineering of, of social platforms. Um, you know, in, in Google's case, he worked on the Google Plus platform. And then when he went to Facebook, obviously on, on, on that whole social platform. But um, he wrote a book and in his book, <clears throat> he was talking about the fact that what's actually now happened is that the Internet has moved on from an environment that was uh, all about indexing content to where it's a it's a it's an internet that's now actually built around people. So this this what you've just mentioned about what you do when you're hiring someone, you know, you go and have a look at at how they are or, or if they're even visible uh, on the social in the social web. And this is the new world that we live in. You know, I, I keep saying to people that you know if you're not if you're not visible on Facebook, if you're not visible on Twitter, if you're not visible on LinkedIn, basically you you are invisible. 
you know, and, and it's exactly what you've just said. The experience you've had when hiring people, um, you're wanting to get a, a picture of an individual, which speaks to another piece of the course that we do um, on, on digital literacy. The, the one module is all about career and identity management. Mm. And, you know, what we, what we help people to understand is that you must understand that when you, as you would in, in an office, I mean, you, you have to think about your personal brand and, and how you want to convey yourself. Exactly. And that, that has to carry through congruently into your social presence as well. I mean, you know, the way you interact on Twitter or the, the, the content that you share on Facebook or the, the tone of voice that you adopt with whatever you do sketches a picture about you and, and you've got to do this on purpose. It can't just be something that you leave to chance, you know. Yes, yes it's something that you have to manage. And, uh, you know, if you're doing any voluntary work, if you're a member of, uh, you know, I, for example, volunteered for International Association of Business Communicators in the UK. It was a brilliant experience. Um, so then when I tell you that I am passionate about communication, you kind of sort of believe me because I have proved that I am willing to dedicate my time. I didn't get paid. Um, you know, I tried to help others. I built them a, a website and, and a social media presence. So it adds weight to your arguments. Um, so it's the doing uh, that, you know, helps people believe what you say. <laughs> awesome. So, <clears throat> Donna, this has been this has been really great chatting to you. We've we've got almost to the end of, of our little half hour session. And, you know, what I would like to suggest is that we should we should maybe, um, you know, have have this conversation going forward a couple more times because i really think yeah, that this is a very it's a very important conversation to have and then we can catch up with you and what's happening at gsk and and so on you know as as this world that we're in develops at breakneck speed i think it's important to have voices like yours um giving insights as to as to what's required for everybody that's that's watching and that will be watching the replay because there's always more people that watch the replay than, than watch us live depending on on the timing and so on i am going to post donna's second um piece that she wrote on linkedin around this last topic that we spoke to i'll drop that in the comments so that you can read that but donna it's been really great chatting to you and i hope you have an awesome weekend and uh, we will definitely catch up with you again to get your insights on the future of digital communications my pleasure. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you for inviting me. Thanks, Donna. So what I'm going to